sis, di ba may exam tayo tomorrow? Talaga ba meron? Bukas? Kasi we're bored? Oo, yung about sa nation building. Ah, sa pre-colonial? Oo, pero nalilito pa ako doon. Wait sis, sanungin ko muna si Bien about sa pre-colonial. Ay, sige, sige. Sige sis, wait lang. Uy, Bien! Di ba alam mo yung pre-colonial? Oo, ah, base sa nabasa ko kagabi, yung pre-colonial time ay yung panahon na hindi pa tayo na nasa. Nasakop ng madayuhan. Ang pre-colonial period ay ito ang panahon na hindi pa nasakop ang ating bansa sa kamay ng madayuhan. Sa panahong ito ay mapayapa at matiwasay ang pamumuhay ng ating maninuno. Nakatuon lamang sa pagsasaka at pag-aalaga ng mga hayop ang kanilang ginagawa. Isa sa magandang ipinakita ng mga magsasaka natin noon ay ang nagawa nilang banawe rice terraces na sobrang napakaganda at talagang makikita pa rin natin ngayon. Ginagamit din ng mga katutubo natin noon ang mga halaman at mga halamang gubat na panggamot sa kanilang mga sakit. Gumagawa din sila ng mga bahay na kaiba at instrumentong pangmusika na nakakaaliw lalo na sa mga bata. Ang pre-colonial period ay isa sa hindi malilimutang pangyayari sa kasaysayan ng ating bansa. Wait lang, Bess. Medyo nalilito pa rin ako sa kolonyal eh. Ako rin nalilito doon. Uy, ayun si Shem, Shems! Uy, bakit? Tulungan Nalil... mo naman kami. Nalilito pa kami kami sa kolonyal eh. Ah, sa kolonyal. Sa kolonyal is, yun yung sa Spanish era. Di ba alam niyo yung Spanish era? Kasi kung meron na yun. Yung sa Spanish era is nung time na sinakop tayo ng mga Espanyol in the Philippines. The colonial period in the Philippines started when Miguel Lopez de Legazpi served as the first governor in the Philippines in 1965 until his death. If you were wondering why Philippine colonial era didn't start with Ferdinand Magellan, it was because Ferdinand Magellan only discovered the islands of the Philippines in 1521. Philippines was then named after King Philip II during the expedition of the Spanish explorer Ruy Lopez de Villalobos. Spain colonized the Philippines by converting the tribes into Christianity. Spanish rule for the first 100 years was exercised in most areas through a type of tax farming imported from the Americas and known as the encomienda. Commissioners from the United States and Spain in Paris on October 1, 1898 to produce a treaty that would bring an end to the war after six months of hostilities. The Treaty of Paris ended the Spanish-American War and forced Spain to cede the Philippines, Guam, and Puerto Rico to the United States. In return, the United States paid Spain $20 million for the Philippines. President William McKinley was then faced with the decision of what to do with the Philippines. Possibilities included to give the islands back to Spain or to cede the Philippines to another colonial power or to give the Philippines their independence. After Americans drove the Spanish out of the Philippines, the Americans became our new rulers. The Americans ruled the Philippines from 1898 to 1946. The Filipinos rebelled against the Americans occupying the Philippines as Americans did not allow Filipino independence. The Filipino rebellion is completely disintegrated by 1901 after three years of fighting the Americans. Filipinos started embracing the American culture. They introduced their culture as such as food, sports, and language. During the ruling of the Americans in the Philippines, the Japanese started invading the Philippines on December 8, 1941, 10 hours after the attack on Pearl Harbor. The Japanese occupation of the Philippines occurred between 1942 and 1945, when Imperial Japan occupied the Commonwealth of the Philippines during World War II. The Philippines Campaign, Battle of the Philippines, Second Philippines Campaign, or the Liberation of the Philippines, codenamed Operation Musketeer 1, 2, and 3, was the American, Mexican, Australian, and Filipino campaign to defeat and expel the Imperial Japanese forces occupying the Philippines during the World War II. The Japanese army overran all of the Philippines during the first half of 1942. 
The liberation of the Philippines from Japan commenced with amphibious landing on the eastern Philippine island of Leyte on October 20, 1944. The United States and the Philippine Commonwealth military forces as well as naval and air support by Mexico and Australia were progressing in liberating territory and islands when the Japanese forces in the Philippines were ordered to surrender by Tokyo on August 15, 1945 after dropping of the atomic bombs on mainland Japan and the Soviet invasion of Manchuria. On July 4, 1946, the Philippines was officially recognized by the United States as an independent nation. From 1946 to 1961, Independence Day was observed on July 4. In 1962, President Makapagal issued Presidential Proclamation No. 28, proclaiming Tuesday, June 12, 1962, a special public holiday. So nga, ganun. Guess nyo na ba? Oo. Okay. Hindi e, nyo naman mas maganda. Maraming okay. salamat siya, ma. Manutunan kami sa iyo. Salamat naman. Uy, tungkol sa topic natin sa post-colonial, guess nyo na ba? Yung post-colonial? Oo oh, naman. Kasi yung post-colonial, ito yung pagkatapos na sa pagsakop ng mga dayuan sa atin. Ah, kaya pala ang ibig sabihin ng post-colonial ay kung ano ang meron tayo at ang nakikita natin. Tama ba? Tumpa! Oh. Ang mga halimbawa nito ay yung mga gadgets, mga gusali, infrastruktura at yung mga sasakyan na nakikita natin ngayon. In post-colonial in the 1980s, as part of a larger wave of new and politicized field of humanistic inquiry, most notably feminism and critical race theory, post-colonial has developed out of the earlier theories of Commonwealth literature and third world studies. The historical period or state of affairs representing the aftermath of Western colonialism. The term can also be used to describe the concurrent project to reclaim and to rethink the history and agency of people subordinated under the various forms of imperialism. So, guess nyo na ba yung sa post-colonial? Oo, oh, oh. guess nyo na ba? Tara, okay na tayo? Tara, tara. Pasi na, pasi!